Hi, thank you for choosing Shapira Medical Group. I'm Dr. David Josephitis, and I will be going over the post-operative care for your hair transplant surgery. I will be going over the, the post-operative kit, which you will be receiving in a bag, something like this, and also going over a few odds and ends and how to take care of your hair over the next few weeks. First of all, one of the items in your bag you'll receive is a liposomal ATP spray. Looks just like this. Uh, this spray is to be used every half an hour for the first 48 hours. Basically, we'll have you spray two to three or four sprays in the affected area, only on the recipient, the top area of your, of your scalp. You can do it during the day while you're awake and occasionally at night. We recommend you sleeping and having a good rest, but if you wake up to use the restroom a couple times at night, go ahead and spray it. Um, again, it's only for the first 48 hours. Um, at the end of the 48 hours, you may still have some um, left, but just toss it. It's only for the first couple days. And again, every half an hour. Next, I will be talking about cleaning and shampooing of the surgical area. So for the first week, you will be shampooing your hair. Many patients are concerned about touching the grafted area, but it's very important to keep the area clean. We recommend you coming in actually tomorrow, the very next day after surgery for a hair wash, and we can do that, do that for you. We typically do it in the morning, and it takes about a half an hour, but we do highly recommend that. If you can't make that for some reason, perfectly fine. Then we'd recommend you doing your own shampooing at least 24 hours after surgery. So that would be tomorrow evening. So the technique is slightly different than washing your hair normally. The first week we want you to be extra careful when you wash your grafts. In the shower, you're gonna be taking this shampoo, which is a very mild shampoo, which is included in your post-operative kit. We're gonna ask you to take also a cup of water, a cup into the uh, shower with you and use that to, to wet your head. What we don't want is direct shower pressure on the scalp. So make sure there's no uh, direct shower pressure for the first seven days. Just use a cup of water under the shower and pour it on the head. Um, lukewarm to warm water is perfect, nothing hot. Um, once you get that, the area wet, take some shampoo, lather it in your hands, get it nice and sudsy, get it onto the affected area there really nicely for a couple minutes. Uh, and then take your cup of water in the shower and pour it over the area until it's uh, free of suds. Um, after that, um, you can towel dry it um, out of the shower. As far as the donor goes, be it for FUE or for the strip procedure, you can wash that as tolerated, keep that clean, but there's no uh, risk of damaging that area during the washing. Now that's the first seven days. Um, after day seven, you can start to use direct shower pressure in the shower and use your fingertips very gently just to massage the scalp. That's the second week. Now after day 14, you're pretty much on your own as far as resuming normal hair washing um, technique and you can also use conditioner at that point to wash your hair. After you wash the hair, uh, we've supplied some ointment uh, in the bag and you can use that to apply to the incision line for the strip or on the uh, donor areas and we encourage you to do that for the first couple days. You really don't have to go any more than that. Uh, and do your best to do it just after you wash, just once a day. I'm now gonna talk about exercise and activity after your surgery. Now it's very important that you be very mindful of the grafts on your scalp the first um, couple weeks, um, especially the first week. And so the first week we encourage you to stay away from any physical activity. Uh, we, don't, we want you to be mindful of uh, bumping into things, cabinets, doors, car doors especially, those things that you may not realize uh, that could come in contact with your scalp. We don't want you to bump or dislodge any grafts. Now, after day seven, you can resume some activity. Uh, we usually encourage you to restrict it to um, aerobic activity, uh, light, light jogging, those types of things, bicycling. Nothing heavy, weightlifting, nothing uh, very, very strenuous. Now, after day 14, uh, you could pretty much resume your normal activity as far as sports goes and things like that. A couple other items, we want you to encourage you the first three nights, if you can, to sleep slightly elevated in, in bed, maybe one or two pillows behind your back. Uh, this is going to help prevent swelling in the forehead, uh, the edema in the, in the forehead. Um, sometimes it's nice to put a couple pillows on either side of you so you don't roll over. 
Um, also, it's very important uh, when you're bending down to, to, uh, to, to pick something up, make sure you use your knees. Again, we don't want you to bump into any cabinets or doors or things like that. So it's important to just be mindful of the, uh, the scalp. Some of you may regularly dye your hair. We encourage you to stay away from this for at least the first month after surgery. And then um, when you do resume dyeing your hair, take special uh, care to test in the very beginning to, to see it because the scalp may still be sensitive from surgery. So make sure you, you do a little bit of a test before you go ahead with a, the full dyeing of your hair a month after surgery. So what should you wear after surgery? So just like today, we appreciate you wearing a button-up shirt, something that you, you can just put on without having to pull over your head. We're very, uh, we want to make sure we don't bump and dislodge any of those grafts. Um, also, we want you to cover the scalp when you're outdoors um, for a couple reasons. Uh, one is just to protect it from the elements, from the sun. And uh, we will supply this for you at the end of the day. Um, this is a, a cap that you can easily put on the scalp. We encourage you to, to put it on the front uh, part of your head first and drape it over, something like so. Um, and we want there to be a little bit of an air pocket there. And gently tie it in the back. Now when you remove this hat, make sure you take it from the back and just kind of flip it over. Now the same can be done with a baseball cap, so those are perfectly fine. Just make sure you put the baseball cap on front to back. It's a little different than you normally would do it back to front. So just make sure you, whatever you do, you're not touching the grafted area. In the wintertime, we encourage you to stay away from stocking caps or anything that's going to be tight and touching the scalp. We want whatever there to be a nice little bit of an air pocket when you're outside. Also, when you're inside, please take the hats off. Uh, it's best for this just to be open to air. Um, it also helps prevent you from falling asleep with a cap on, which would be dangerous as well. Uh, when you're outside again, remember in, in the summer um, with the sun, it's very important that you protect yourself from the sunlight. There's a chance for, for burning more easily the first few months after surgery. So just be very careful with the cap. Also, uh, the next month you might want to use some protection, SPF protection for the scalp to prevent sun, sun damage as well. So bleeding can sometimes be an issue after surgery. Um, if it is, uh, there may be some oozing or bleeding from the incision site with the strip procedure or from the, re the uh, incision sites of the FUE. Occasionally there could be bleeding on the top. Usually it's very, very minor, nothing to be worried about. Um, if there is some bleeding or oozing, we're also gonna be giving you a, some sterile gauze. Um, just use this and apply pressure, gentle pressure to the area, affected area for about five to 10 minutes and the bleeding should stop. Um, if there's any concerns or you're having issues with bleeding, you can always contact us as well, uh, the care, patient care line, which I'll talk to you about a little bit later. In addition to that, when you're sleeping, we've enclosed a, a couple items here for you to protect your, your, your bed sheets. Uh, these are for the, the pillows, these are pillowcase covers. We encourage you to use those the first couple nights. Also, there are a couple of these absorbent um, pads which you can put over your pillow as well. And this will all help you just to protect your, your pillows the first couple nights. Let's talk about swelling. As I mentioned to you before, we encourage you to sleep with your head a little bit elevated the first couple nights, which should help prevent swelling. Also an item which can help prevent swelling is the use of ice packs. And we have a couple of these ice packs in the, your, your bag that you can use. Just keep these uh, cool and uh, use these the first couple days. I recommend uh, using them for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now make sure you apply them to the forehead only. Don't put them on the grafted area, just the forehead. Use them for about five to 10 minutes. Take a break and do it again. Do this about three, four times the first night and then the next day do that throughout the day if you can. Now some patients may still get swelling even if you try all this. Remember that swelling is not uh, painful. It's not gonna change the results of the surgery. Um, it's something that may happen uh, to about 10 to 15% of patients no matter what you do. Um, if you do get swelling, it's gonna occur here and it's gonna kind of slowly drift down. Once it gets past your nose, it goes away. So it just looks funny, it's cosmetically um, something that you could be aware of, um, but usually after a couple of days it goes away and it's not a problem. So let's talk about folliculitis. Um, sometimes there may be some small little areas on the recipient area that develop pimple-like spots. Um, these, are, these can occur right after surgery, which in the first couple weeks, and they can also occur a couple months later. Um, if they do occur, they're usually very small, not that, that many of them. You can easily put some uh, antibiotic ointment on there a couple times a day. Also make sure that you're washing your scalp very nicely. Um, and they usually go away. In addition, you can add some warm um, compresses, which would help to relieve that. 
it's normal for most patients to get these, and so don't be alarmed. Um, if you do get a lot of them or they're being, becoming very troublesome, please don't hesitate to contact us, and uh, we may decide to call in an antibiotic if we, if we deem that's necessary. Swimming and sun, as I mentioned to you before, the hat is very important when you're out and about to protect yourself from the sunlight. We don't want you to burn your scalp. In addition, swimming, we encourage you to stay away from that for at least the first 10 to 14 days, and then you can resume. Let's talk about alcohol use. Uh, alcohol is uh, recommended to, to be avoided the first day or two after surgery. Uh, we recommend you to um, be aware if you are taking the pain medicine, which we give you, that you don't mix that with alcohol. And otherwise, uh, it's not an issue to resume, uh, resume moderate use of alcohol uh, after surgery. Let's talk a little bit about smoking. We thank you for stopping uh, at least a month before surgery. It's also advised to stop smoking for at least a few months after surgery. Many studies have shown uh, that smoking can cause much poorer growth uh, in patients. And so we encourage you to hold off as long as you can and perhaps even quit smoking altogether. Let's talk a little bit about numbness. Now it's very common for our patients to experience this right after surgery. We made many small incisions on top and also into the back and uh, you will most likely have some small amount of that numbness on the front and on the back. Uh, typically this resolves after a few days to a few weeks uh, in most patients. Occasionally it could last a little bit longer, even up to a year in very small areas. Let's talk about pain control. Uh, this procedure is uh, very low pain and typically most patients don't require a ton of pain medications after surgery, but it's always important to stay on top of things. And so we encourage you to uh, kind of think about that. Today after surgery, we most likely gave you some ibuprofen or some acetaminophen for uh, residual discomfort after surgery. And we encourage you to do the same yourself the next few days. We encourage you to stay on top of the pain and to, to take something the next few days just in case. We don't, definitely don't want you to get behind and have, have more pain than you should. Um, ibuprofen is a great medication to start with and you can take anywhere from 400 to 800 milligrams uh, three times a day if you wish with meals. The same is true with acetaminophen if that works for you. Anywhere from 500 to 1000 milligrams is great. And it's good to take these over-the-counter medications during the day because they don't, they don't make you groggy. Um, and especially if you're going to be working the next few days. Now, in addition to that, if you're having some breakthrough pain, we, we are going to be supplying you with a narcotic that you can be taking home with. And uh, you can use that at any point during the day. If you are not driving or drinking alcohol, you can take that to kind of top off and control the, the pain that you're having. It's also very helpful for you to take this the first couple of nights. It does help you sleep a little bit, especially when you're lying back and it might be a little sore in the back. So go ahead and take that. We encourage you to try it, take the medication about an hour before you go to bed, just to give it some time to kick in. Now, if you've had the strip procedure, we encourage you to make an appointment with us to have those staples or sutures removed in about 10 to 14 days. You can do that today or you can do that um, over the phone in the next couple of days and we'll take care, of the, take care of that for you. Finally, I'd like to remind you that you have the, this post-op sheet within your kit. I encourage you to go over it. It covers everything that we just discussed. There's also the video address on top, so if you'd like to re-watch this, feel free to do that. On the back, there's a, a phone number, so after office hours, if you have any questions or concerns, you can call the patient care line, and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. If for some reason you can't reach us or we haven't returned your phone call in a timely manner, uh, and you feel that the need is uh, of a more serious nature, please try to call your primary care physician, or if not, uh, dial 911 if you feel that you, you're having some, some deep concerns. Once again, thank you for choosing Shapira Medical. We look forward to following you and your results along the way. Take care and have a great day.